Hello, welcome to Arcade 85. As you can see, we're not in the arcade today, we're in the dermatology office. We're gonna be talking today about fluorouracil. And if we look closely, oh my, today I have a rash. I got some stuff going on. What is this? Could it be that fluorouracil is causing this rash? Why, yes. Let's go ahead and take off this white coat and get to business. We start today with the Captain Cutaneum comic book series, which I write and illustrate for students of all ages. And in the amazing, fourth amazing issue of the comic book series, we talk about dry, subtle, sandpaper textured pre-cancers each of which are trying to turn into skin cancer. When we get too much sun over the years, we wind up making these pre-cancer lesions sometimes that then can become skin cancer. And our floral uracil cream helps us to get rid of those pre-cancers so that we can prevent cancers from forming. When I was first introduced to this medicine, when I was a young doctor back in the 1990s, I went ahead and did a two week course then, and I was only turning 30 years old at the time, and boom, I lit up like a Christmas tree. And so in the decades since, I've been saying, I need to get back to using some of that fluorouracil because I imagine I still have some pre-cancers. At the time that I flared then, I didn't even have clinical lesions. Now, I didn't have many clinical lesions this time. In other words, I couldn't really see the lesions, but I wanted to, apply the medicine to see how much would come out. And as you can see, I've got some rash, some. But my flare is not significant this time, not nearly as significant as it was uh, 27 years ago. And so to me, that's a good signal. That means that me wearing hats, sunglasses, sunscreen, collars, doing all the right stuff has allowed me to have fewer pre-cancers now in my 50s than I did as I was turning 30 years old. So that's kind of cool. So fluorouracil is a chemical that was discovered decades ago to work against cancer cells. So it's a cancer chemotherapy medicine. And it was originally um, put into IV bags and given into patients intravenously primarily to help them with GI and internal malignancies, 5-fluorouracil. And among those patients that were getting treated with IV fluorouracil, among those patients, a percentage of them would also, when they were receiving this chemotherapy into their system, they would light up in sun-exposed areas. And the dermatologist then recognized, oh, this is a cancer chemotherapy medicine that's working against cancer, but it's also working against the precancers on the surface of the skin. And so as you can imagine, if you would take a little bit of that medicine that was otherwise going into the person and instead apply it on the surface, they found that, wow, it works on the outside as well. And so we're applying a medicine externally for these external lesions with very little systemic absorption. As a general rule, we're applying the medicine for two weeks. When we're doing the face, we're applying the medicine for two weeks and we're looking awful for two weeks, but those aren't the same two weeks. There's about a one week lag where the first week you're applying and you're looking okay. No one can tell that you're putting the stuff on. The second week though, boy, people can tell you start to light up. We then stop the medicine, and that third week, we look pretty bad. So the classic mistake is the patient that comes in to see me saying, I've got two weeks off, I wanna look awful so that I can mop up my pre-cancers, what do you say we start? And to that we say, ooh, we probably should have started last week. You actually could have been applying the medicine because it's going to be these next two weeks that things are gonna be looking rough. And so there's a one week lag. For faces, as I say, we generally apply for about 14 days. Meanwhile, um, 
everybody's a little bit different. And so my 14 days are gonna look different than other people's 14 days. And so you have to use good judgment. If you are really lit up, you actually want to back off. What I like to do is when prescribing the medicine, I'll give the patient a prescription and then we'll follow up with an appointment uh, for day 14 of that process. And so the person says, well, this month isn't a good month for it. I'll do it next month and let's go ahead and schedule on the 30th of next month. And I'll back, be back here in the office for that appointment. And so they get a hold of the medicine and they start applying the medicine twice a day, applying the medicine for 14 days leading up to that next visit so that we can see where they are on day 14. And as I say, this is my day 14 today. And so some flare, but I think this also represents, as I say, not too many precancers. When we apply elsewhere, we get varying results. And so for example, if a bald man comes in here and he wants his face and his scalp treated, he'll go ahead and start and for 14 days, twice a day, he's applying and generally speaking, at day 14, the face is done and the scalp might be done or it might require more time. Sometimes scalps require up to four weeks of this medicine. Interestingly, if we have a precancer on an ear, the ears can be very fickle with this medicine. And so sometimes precancers an inch away will light up and on the ear, they just won't light up, precancers. So it gets a little bit crazy. When we apply the cream, we do a little toothpaste size tube strip, and that's usually enough. What we like when we're doing faces is to apply through the classic sunburn zone. I was wearing sunglasses at the beach and I got a sunburn right through here. So we like to emphasize this area, emphasize these temples, go ahead and hit forehead, bring it down into the eyebrows, bring it down where we don't like to apply to the face, especially not the first time around, is in this crease, the melolabial fold, this crease, and the triangle here that exists under the nose. We don't like to do the lips around the mouth, the chin, nothing in this triangle first time around. Frankly, that's because if we were to go after precancers in this area, they tend to light up faster than the 14 days required to do this. And as I say, a bald scalp will take even longer sometimes. By the way, when we do a face, we have a really nice result. This is gonna be nice and smooth when I'm all done. When we do a scalp, we get pretty good results. If we have a lot of precancers on the upper chest, pretty good results. Back in the neck, pretty good results. Not as good and as smooth as the face. We still have some residual precancers that can escape the therapy. That's just the nature of this cream. If we we're to do at some point hands and forearms, that in my experience gives us about a 50% reduction of our precancers. So farmers who have a lot of precancers, we have them use this cream, but be careful. It can really light up on forearms. And when they're all done, uh, about 50% improvement has been my experience where the face does really well. Let's check my notes here. People look at these rashes and they ask, do these hurt? Is it hurt? And the answer is, it's uncomfortable after a while. It starts to get tight, but it doesn't hurt the way that you would expect, especially if you have a pretty brisk reaction. By the way, you don't clear up until you stop the medicine. The whole idea is must stop medicine. When we're done, you stop, you put that medicine aside. By the way, the medicine lasts for years and years. There'll be an expiration date that, uh, that doesn't allow the pharmacist to give it to a patient after a certain date. But boy, once you own this stuff, hold on to it. I've had patients dust off embarrassingly old tubes of this. I'm talking 15 year old tubes of this stuff and they still get a good flare. So I encourage patients to hold on to that old tube. And if that's not giving us the proper flare, then we can get a new tube, but always use the old one first because the stuff can be expensive. We'll talk about that in a moment. 
So we don't get better until we discontinue the medicine. That's a very important point. Some people naively think that they, if they continue to apply, eventually things will go away. It's like, no, no, no. This medicine goes after dividing cells. Each of these precancers represents a colony of dividing cells trying to turn into a cancer. And so the dividing cells are susceptible to the medicine where the stable cells nearby are not. Hence, the medicine is able to find the precancers. I didn't have these pink spots before I started. I just applied the medicine, and these are the areas that lit up. The medicine found those precancers. And so we're applying, and every day we're looking in the mirror, and for the first few days, as I say, nothing's happening. We're looking in the mirror and it's very anticlimactic. Wait a minute, I made a big deal of this. I came to see the doctor, I got a prescription, I made a follow-up appointment, where's my flare? But we start to notice that about day four or five, little tiny pink dots start to show up. And eventually those dark dots start to coalesce. They start to grow into each other and collide into each other. And some people, as I say, can have quite a flare. So you need to use good judgment. If you're having too much flare, if this is intimidating, then you stop your medicine, you still follow up on that day 14 appointment, and we say, ah, look, you could probably start up a little bit and use a little bit more. You won't ruin things by stopping prematurely. We can always add more time to those medicine, to, uh, to the days that we've done. When patients keep their tube, and they want to use it regularly or for spot treatment to clear things up, they tend not to worry too much about the number of days required. Meaning, we make a big deal first time around, let's do 14 days. But if you're cooked at day 11, or if you're not cooked until day 17, that's okay, you just keep up with the medicine until you have the proper amount of flair with those experienced patients. We have to be careful. Well, we have patients come back generally two months after doing a fluorouracil flare so that we can then see what is left. And sometimes we've smoked out a cancer. Sometimes all of the spots go away except for one. And we have to beware of that one spot. Wait a minute, what are you still doing here? How come you were able to withstand the treatment that cleared all of the others out? And unfortunately, if you remember that transition from precancerous actinic keratosis to skin cancer, and whoops, sometimes we have a skin cancer that's already formed. And so beware of a spot that can survive fluorouracil, and be sure to point that out to your prescribing doctor. You should be getting better when you stop the medicine, like today I'm gonna stop, I'm all done, this is 14 days, I've had enough. When you stop the medicine, everything gets progressively better. You clear up. Every day is going to be milder than the previous over the next week or so. It'll be getting better, not worse. If we're getting worse, that's a little concerning. And one of the concerns is, whoops, if we've eroded too much of the surface by going after these precancers, then sometimes we can actually have an infection set up shop. And patients can sometimes get worse. And on day four after they stop, or five days after they stop, they're getting worse. That's time to call. And sometimes we need an oral antibiotic to clear up that infection. Infection takes advantage of the fact that we're missing that outer layer of skin. So in each of these little areas, I'm missing a little bit of surface, but it's okay because body knows how to get over that. But if I have too much surface eroded, sometimes bacteria sets up shop. So we have to be careful there. I think we're winding down here. Oh, let's talk about price real quick. So back in the 1990s at a pharmacy paying cash in the United States, this was about $35 as I recall. Interestingly, the price went up, and in the early 2000s, the stuff got expensive. In fact, uh, about 15, 10, 15 years ago, this was running at $350 retail 
in local pharmacies, which is just crazy because the medicine had been around for so long. It wasn't because it was something new. It just got crazy expensive, that big pharma shenanigans stuff. And so um, in recent years, it's been coming back down. When I purchased this medicine, it was $55. And so paying cash today, the video is in 2022, it's about $55, but prices come and go. And I know what you're saying, wait a minute, if I have prescribed thousands of prescriptions of fluorouracil, isn't there some free stuff for me somewhere? So it ain't so. Tell me, Captain Cutanium, you don't have to pay for medicines, not for skin medicines. Yes, unfortunately, I have to pay as well. So I paid about $55 for this stuff. And the tube's going to last. I mean, two-week course from a 40-gram tube doesn't take much. Every once in a while, you'll get a patient that says, I squeezed it out, and now three days later, I'm out of medicine. I need a refill of the medicine. It's like, oh, you used way too much. Again, just a toothpaste-sized strip will generally cover everything that you want. Rub it in good like you mean it, by the way. Rub it in like you're trying to get a result. Some people will be a little too dainty with it and it's not gonna get in. It's a medicine, it has to work itself in. Let me go over these points real quick, make sure I'm not missing anything. I think that that pretty much covers it. Oh, oh, here's one. Um, patients tend to wash too much. They wash too much. I put the medicine on in the morning and then before I put it on at night, I scrub my face really good to remove that outer layer. No, no, no. If you're washing too much, that's actually going to cause a little more exfoliation, which causes our cells to then divide a little bit more to replace those lost skin cells. And unfortunately, those dividing cells, they respond to the medicine and they start to react. And so when you see a really brisk reaction, really bad reaction, oftentimes that's a, that's a patient that's, a, that's washing too much in between. So let's not wash too much. All right, so this wraps up our discussion on fluorouracil, an excellent medicine to take care of precancers. Enjoy your arcade games and we'll see you next time.